What's up guys, Gums and welcome back to Pro Summer 2022 for episode number 31 of our Garmin Cervelo career mode. Today's episode is the start of the Vuelta, the final Grand Tour of the season. We've done a very good job in Italy where we got a podium. We've done an even better job in France where we won. I mean, I, I don't think we're going to be able to carry on in this Vuelta with the same kind of results. Last year's winner is not here. Hugo will not partake in uh, in this is Volta, you can see the lineup on your screen right now. Uh, objective is a stage win, just like it was on the Tour de France. Hopefully we can achieve that and maybe more. However, the Volta started with a team time trial and I decided to sim it because uh, I don't care. 56 seconds is the loss for the boys today. Alright, lovely. Our Volta properly begins here. Uh, I did not change the parkour like I said I would. Um, Figured I didn't really need to, um, because it's not the best lineup I'll ever have. So I figured there wasn't really a point in having a very difficult parkour. Um, start list is decent: Carapaz, Vingegaard, Evenepoel, Mas, Miron, Lopez, David Godu, um, Lenny Kemna. They nearly won the Giro. Could he do the same on the Vuelta? Nielsen Perales, uh, probably the best American rider that is not in my team so far, knowing that Jordan Broski is not available. But yeah, some solid teams all around. Um, do you have a sprinter? I feel like that's a question I've asked every single time I start a Grand Tour. Uh, I got 7 minus sprints with Jorgensen, and it's a minus 4 on XL Vogel. Alright, well I guess we're sprinting for Matteo Jorgensen today. 7k to go, and uh, oh, I was going to say my sprint, uh, my sprint train isn't where it should be. It's actually in P1. That's not something I expected. Uh, Fabio Christen is going to propel uh, Vinicius Rangel, uh, sorry, Rangel Costa, I've been, uh, I've been told it was Rangel and not Rangel. Um, and, and then, then we're going to see what happens. We'll see what happens going to next. Rangel Costa, Zhukovsky in the corner. Then Axel Vogel. Then Matteo Jorgensen. Then Shawnee Quinn. Jorgensen currently holding P1. Not for long. As Mats Pedersen is going to take the first stage. No, he's not. It's Caden Groves. Caden Groves ahead of Sean Quinn and Mats Pedersen. See? That's why I love Vuelta's... No, just the sprints on the Vuelta. Because they make no sense. Sean Quinn with our first podium of the season in the Spanish Grand Tour. Final stage in the Netherlands uh, of uh, what would be the prelude. The prelude? The, the, is that a word? The preview? The prequel. The prequel to uh, the uh, Bing Bong Tour, which I will obviously not play, uh, just like I did not play the Tour of Poland. We actually had a funny winner, I need to show that uh, after the stage. Um, but uh, yeah, plus two for Vogel, we're gonna sprint for Vogel, get second, or P3, and uh, we'll call it a day. And uh, there's gonna crash in the peloton involving Matej Jorgensen and Vinicius Rangel Costa. I'm sorry, is Fred Wright not gonna pay? Vinicius, mate, give, give water, fucking hell. Oh, I swear to God. Oh, we're so far behind. Um, Matt Jorgensen is my GC leader, by the way. I just needed to uh, clarify that. Uh, right, let's, let's drop everyone, let's just keep Sean Quinn uh, and Alex in the peloton. Withdrawal for Remco Vinipol. Cool. Wait, Bora is there as well. And then, wait, sorry. Uh, yeah, Bora's there. And you're not pacing. With Kelderman and Vlasov, you're not. Who are you? And why aren't you basing? Wait, can I just... I do this? Do they follow? Yeah, they're done. Right, uh, we're gonna drop... We're gonna drop a lot of riders today. Vlasov, Kelderman, I've just lost La, La Vuelta España. The worst thing about this, it's Bora the one pacing up front. That like Lucas Pustelberger is single-handedly ruining the chances of Wilco Kelderman and Vlasov. Do they have Jahindley? Bora, 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 Bora. They've got Manuel Buchmann. <laughs> yes, they're done. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, to James P. Colley, but we should be back in the peloton. Get in. Matteo Jorgensen is safe. My riders won't come back at the front of the group, but that's okay. Um, Zhukovsky, Mason Ray, and uh, Kristen will sorry, and uh, Jorgensen won't be able to uh, partake in the sprint. But we don't we don't really care. All right, the GC was uh, the main main thing to protect today. Did not expect this stage to uh, be as tricky as it was. Tell you what, Matty Jorgensen could could have a, a bit of a of, of a fight here. Matty Jorgensen, if if he wanted to, could potentially fight for the sprint. Sean Quinn will try and propel Alex Vogel towards a, a top fifteen position. 
I think that's the best I can achieve right now. There goes Mason Ray, there goes Jorgensen. Alex Vogel is in the block sprint. Uh, it's going to be a win for Caden Groves. Back-to-back stages for the Australian ahead of Pascal Ackerman and Nasser Bouani. Could it be at, at least a top 15? I think that's like P12 probably around here. And that's P14 for Alex Vogel. The group of, uh, of Lassoff is going to lose more than 11 minutes today. And it's time for the first heady stage of this Vuelta. We are in Spain, we're in the Basque country. They've hosted the Vuelta this year, or hosted the Vuelta. Went through the Basque country this year, the great towns of Irun and Arate. They will also host the Tour de France in a few months. And uh, it is a plus five for Sean Quinn today, hoping to uh, get some knowledge, some connaissance upon them mountains. Mason Ray, decent as well. Uh, where's Matteo? Matteo with a plus two as well, that's lovely. That's lovely. Uh, how much did Vinicius lose today? Or oh, yesterday, sorry. 80 minutes. All right, 18 minutes down. I don't think Vlasov can fight for the GC anymore. It's a wild guess. I, I don't think he's got what it takes. That's it. This is quite a difficult stage. Uh, breakaway of three right now. Peter Seri, James Piccoli, and Daniel Quintana. Uh, Roman Kubo was with us, but he cracked. So, uh, so did the, um, the mountain leader, I think, Diego Lopez for uh, Burgos Berhace. Um, the Peloton has been chasing the entire day. Bora has really, really, really been pacing throughout the entire stage. As there's an attack by Peter Seri and the Arquintana up front. Um, yeah, it's just been very, very, very fucking difficult. And we started the Alto de Arate, uh, the final climb of today's stage, today's fourth stage of the world. So we've got some attacks up front. Ben Solit, currently P4 of the GC, has attacked alongside Maxim Van Riels. A quick step that still has GC ambitions despite losing uh, the almighty Remco Evenepoel on the right side of the of the peloton. We find Fabio Christen, Matteo Jorgensen, and Sean Quinn. Um, I don't really know who I should go for GC-wise. It's a very tricky situation. I feel like Sean Quinn may be the best shout when it comes to the mountain aspect, and the pure mountain aspect, but when it comes to the rest, Matteo Jorgensen may be the best suited. It's a tricky one, it's a tricky one. We've got some more attacks up front. Jack Haig uh, has bridged alongside Go... No, no. I'm not having another Gorkaise Gere Masterclass. I've had one last year already. Enric Mas is here, 34 seconds on the peloton led by Matthias Schielmoser and Wilco Kelderman in the Alto de Arate. And despite pacing 87 89, we're not gonna bridge the group of three up front. Maxim van Riels is gonna take the stage today at the Alto de Arate ahead of Ben Solitz, Jack Haig, and a peloton led by Sean Quinn and Matthew Jorgensen. Very good performance actually by, uh, by Sean Quinn who claims yet another podium on this Vuelta by overtaking Jack Haig. Richard Carpas takes P6, the peloton comes home. 41 seconds after the champion of Belgium, Maxime Van Riels. I'll tell you what, it's a good day. It's a very good day for uh, this heady stage between Pamplona and Le Cumberi. 154 kilometers today for the, um, for the person of the Vuelta. Plus 5 for Zukowski, Jorgensen, Sean Quinn, Fabio Christen, plus 4 for Mason Ray. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll send Fabio Christen the breakaway alongside Nicolas Zukowski. Where we, we won't do whatever we, we call in the business, say you go, because uh, I just. I mean, I don't believe in this happening in this tour, but you never know. Maybe our first stage win of the Vuelta can come from those two riders, Switzerland and Canada. And what a message, because they were there at the very beginning of the Cervelo test team. And now they're leading a Grand Tour stage. Well, despite the nice image, the nice memories of uh, Zhukovsky and Fabio on the Rockway, uh, they've barely made it halfway through the stage, and we're now in the final climb, the Alto de Tamiguel de Arrar... Yeah, that one. We'll say Aralar, because I'm French, fuck it. Um, it's an 8km climb. We'll probably just manage to stay with the the, the, the main masses of, uh, of the peloton. And if we do, then a potential sprint for Matteo Jorgensen could open itself up. I'd love for Sean Quinn to be next to me, in the words of Emily Sunday. Well, that's an, that's an old reference, wow. Because um, I feel like he could potentially prove uh, prove to be quite quite useful in uh, the latter portion of the stage. Uh, we've got Sister Ray here trying to, to move a bit more. Fuck, actually, let's attack with Matteo Jorgensen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds like a plan to me. Good attack by Matteo Jorgensen here in the Alto de Tamigua de Arralar. To cancel the summit, and I'm pretty much certain that Matteo Jorgensen is going to do well. Uh, whether I'll win, not sure, it depends. What happens in the downhill portion, and if Miguel Lopez attacks, which he has done, uh, we'll try and follow with Sean Quinn. 
We're gonna try and follow at least we're gonna jump in all of our, our Richard Carapas. Alright, Jorgensen is gonna cross the summit in T1, that's what matters. And then Sean Quinn is gonna probably try to stick with this group here, doesn't tag by uh by Vlasov again. He's eight mi 18 minutes down, mate. At, at this point, just give up. Well, honestly, just give up. Vlasov's coming back on Jorgensen. So is everyone actually. Uh I don't like that. How's Vlasov back already? Brother. Brother. Uh, well, I'm in a bit of a, of a predicament here. I'm going to follow Vlasov and see what happens in this group here, because I've got Sean Quinn. Can't really afford to do anything nonsensical. Uh, 2.5 counts till the end. Vlasov stopped. Oh, you're such a bell end. Vlasov stopped anything. Oh, Matteo, please win it. Please, come on, son. Come on, come on, come on. Go get him, go get him. Go get him, Tiger. Go get him. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you, Vlasov. Have that. Have that. Fucking have that, you can't. Jorgensen takes it ahead of Vlasov and Goldbrady. It's a PCM win. Why am I so gassed about it? Fucking hell. Pro up game. All right. 164 kilometers for the first real summit finish of this Vuelta. Lodoza, La, Luna, La Laguna Negra de Vinuesa. Uh, it's a plus five for Jorgensen, a plus two for Sean Quinn. Where's Matteo? Matteo's P10 in the GC. Same second as Sean Quinn. Yeah, we're gonna go for Matteo Jorgensen. Okay. Yeah. I think... I think I've settled... to go for Matteo Jorgensen. Um, could I get a James Piccoli in the break? One time, we'll, we'll, we'll try, and, uh, try and achieve that. I reckon... I reckon th there's a potential breakaway winning stage today. Wilson begin the uh, climb towards uh, La Laguna Negra. Apologies for the episode going late as well. Um, I think the previous one and this one are late by at least one day. Um, the reason for that... So, uh, I was at the Tour de France presentation. For those that haven't seen on my, uh, on my socials, I put it on Twitter and uh, on Insta. Um, I was at the Tour, de France, the Tour de France presentation with uh, my beloved classmates. And um, following said Tour de France presentation, I was invited for drinks in a bar. That sells literal liters of beer for five euros. And as a student, therefore an alcoholic, th yeah, there was no way I was passing that up. So I drank quite, uh, quite a lot. Uh, not to the point that I was drunk, but to the point that I could not consume any kind of beverage. And uh, it, it pushed back my schedule of recording because I just felt like I was not in shape to recall PCM. So yeah, apologies on that end. Hopefully you guys aren't too sad. Uh, if you are, then grow up, yeah? No, don't let your, la your life be dictated by the fucking schedule of a PCM YouTuber. And in the meantime, enjoy the sprint finish in La Laguna Negra when Matty Jorgensen is potentially gonna go for a second win here on La Vuelta a España unless Enric Mas does what Enric Mas does best, and that is pissing me off, but he does not, it's a win for Matty Jorgensen. Great work by Sean Quinn and by the rest of Garmin Cervalo, Jorgensen claims the win today. Bit of a sprint stage today. After the uh, three consecutive Healy stages, it is a, uh, a polka dot jersey for Matty Jorgensen, let's take a look, he's glorious. He, or even the bike. And you know what, the fact that it's um, white and blue, it's reminiscent to our actual jersey, so like the bike is basically pink. I love that. I love I love that. I love the attention to detail that is definitely made by the game and not the uh, kit slash equipment makers. Um, bit of a breakaway today. We'll see if uh, if Fabio Christian has a chance. He's been going in seven. No, I'm not kidding. Not seven breakaways. Let's, let's, let's not take a look. Let's not take the piss. Uh, but he's gone for at least five breakaways so far, and he's never been able to make uh, the, the midway point of the stage. Hopefully today's his day. Round of applause for Fabio Christen. He's managed to make the final 20k of this stage uh, in the breakaway. Sadly, that's it. That's uh, the end of his breakaway. We're going to prepare the sprint though. Um, we're going to go for Alex Vogel, let's be honest. Let's be realistic. We're going to go Vogel, Jorgensen, Sean Quinn in the wheel. And then a bit of a, a, bit of a Zhukovsky, Rangel Costa, Mason Ray. That's uh, that that right there. That is a lovely train. It's not a love strain, or a love strain. That's a uh, Silk Sonic. 
But that, that's a lovely drink. That's at least, at least a TGV. Maybe, maybe even a Eurostar. I'm trying to share. I don't know nothing about trains. I don't like trains. I'm a, I'm a planes guy myself. Bit of a, of a 737 Max. Ooh. Hell yeah. Tell you what, an A350 is also quite peng. And you know what's peng? It's the fact that my train has not blown up. That right there. That's, that's, that's quite spectacular. Uh, but we're gonna launch soon with Vinicius Rangel Costa. There he goes. Nikola Zhukovsky in the corner. He's already lost 53 positions. That's great. Uh, really, really, really is simply lovely. There's a motorbike going completely bonkers in the streets here. You've probably heard it. But my sprint has not gone bonkers. It's a win for Mats Pedersen ahead of Phil Bauhaus, Magnus Kord Nielsen, Pascal Ackermann, and the entirety of the peloton. And also a stage of the episode, um, Matthew Jorgensen with a nice plus three. It's a zero for Sean Quinn. I did well to, uh, to maximize, I think. Matthew Jorgensen also because he's the only one in the team with a fitness peak. Um, actually, no, I think Fabio Christen has one. Do I send him in a breakaway? No, I'm going to give him some rest for once. Um, actually, I don't think I'm going to go in the breakaway today. Actually, no, we're sending James Piccoli. I tell you what, Vinicius Rangel Costa was good today. He was by far the strongest of the breakaway, as a matter of fact. Uh, sadly, being the strongest in a group of riders that aren't strong, well, it's not really good. Oh, we've attacked at the same time as Componance, and he, oh, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, Vinicius was the strongest. Had I had a strong breaker with me, I probably could have done better than what we're going to do today. Uh, which is not a lot, because uh, we're going to crumble very early on in the Alto de Petralba. We're going to get joined by Jack Haig and Davide Formola. Great attack by Jack Haig. Um Also quite close in the GC, 45 seconds down on uh, the group. Is it, is it still bent at it? It is still Ben Salet in red. We're getting some attacks in uh, the final towards uh, Sabinianigo. I'm trying to get Sean Quinn to get water. He's been uh, actively trying that for about 15 kilometers now, and he's still not there. So, I feel like at this point, you may want to give up. Actually, you know, Sean Quinn, perfect timing. Literally perfect timing. Slap yourself in the train of Fabio Christen. All right, Christen launches his efforts. 2k to go. Sean Quinn. Perfect timing for Sean Quinn. There goes Matthew Jorgensen in the corner. Carapace isn't following. Schelmoser. Schelmoser. Schelmoser is not coming back. It's a third win for Matthew Jorgensen here on this Volta. It's the quinch stage of the episode. It is a mountain one until uh, we reach the Col du Tourmalet. It will be the, the peacekeeper of the Tour de France fam. It will be also on the Tour de France uh, for the men's. But today... Today it's on the world side, today it is facing 175 riders, some aiming for the win, some definitely not, like Vinicius Rangel Costa with his minus 4, or Axel Vogel with his minus 3, or even with a plus 5, I don't think he would have made the Col d'Obisque. Florian Stonks has attacked alongside Hines Gaulmadsen. I'll try and see what I could do with uh, the minus 2 of Mateo. Sorry, the plus two of Matteo. Also, I'm very much aware that this stage is most likely going to be a, a winning breakaway. So just for the sake of the matter, we're going to send Zhukovsky. We'll soon begin the Côte de We've got a group of eight up front with two-time stage winner on the world, Jay Vine. We also have Florian Stork here for Vacances Soleil, Alexander Vlasov, the unluckiest man of the first week. Guy Slimreiser, the unluckiest man on the Giro. We've got Kun Buman. We've got Rafa Maika, we've got Torales for Burgos Bahache with Chris Nielands and Steven Williams. Torales for Kofidis with the Thomas Champion and Rémi Rochard. We've got Lucas Amundsen here for Vacances Soleil with Florian Stork and finally Torales for Lotto Destiny with Attila Valta and Sylvain Monique. Good start for Sylvain Monique. From it behind is Dyer Quintana, then it is Valerio Conti and Simon Guglielmi. Then it is The Peloton led by Steven Kroveik and Fred Wright uh, traveling around 5 minutes 36 minutes behind the peloton, sorry, the, the breakaway. It's five riders in the peloton, three riders of our team only, with Matthew Jorgensen, Sean Quinn, and James Piccoli being the three survivors. Definitely going into this climb uh, with a mindset that isn't a winning one. This one is more about defending what I have, um, or actually what I don't have, which is a lead, um, but trying to um, stay quite close. If I can lose less than two minutes on the leaders, um, I would classify that as a win. Yeah, I definitely would probably call that a win. 10k to go in the Côte de Tourmalet. So far, so good. Still in the peloton. Um, no attacks. 
as of yet as well, uh, which is good. Attila Valtar caught by the peloton led by uh, Tim Ball and Sonny Colbrelli that uh, sadly retired this morning. At least put a, a press release saying his retirement. Um, I'm going to guess Vlasov is a front. Yeah, Vlasov and Steven Williams. Great job by um, by the young rider of, uh, of Burgos Berge. Not young anymore, but still out here. Uh, you have to uh, have to give him props. In the present, we're looking at 8 km till the summit, and the energy level of Matteo Jorgensen is quite bleak. And the favorites have attacked. The favorites have attacked. Uh, we've got Van Riels, Max Carabas, Christian Rodriguez, Jonas Vingegaard, Geraint Thomas, Mikel Landa, the only one not attacking. It's Miguel Angel Lopez. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Put the blame on someone else, and definitely not Matteo Jorgensen, who cannot, for the life of himself, do anything in today's stage. I said I would have been happy with a, a two-minute loss. I think we're we're probably going to near maybe three three thirty at this rate. Um, I don't even think Vlasov and Williams are going to claim the win because they look they, they all seem to slow down. The only one that's not able to follow the peloton is Matteo, and I guess I guess Ben Tollett in itself is a bit of a of a disappointment. So Mikel Landa, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 done. Well done. It's uh, it's finito for um for Matthew Jorgensen out here with Matthias Schellmoser, Thomas Gluck, Jay Vine, Wilke Kellerman. But the rest of the peloton is well and truly ahead. Vlasov takes the win at the Col du Tourmalet 2100 meters above sea level. Remarkable performance for the new Polka leader as well. Simon Williams comes in P2 with Geisleim Reiser P3. The peloton led by Miguel Relopez and Hugh Karth is going to come in for uh, a P4, respectable P4. Then, then everyone is kind of spread everywhere. Yeah, yeah, everyone's spread around. Uh, Matteo is going to lose about four minutes on uh, Vlasov, maybe three minutes on the main riders. And here are your podiums at the end of the first episode of the Vuelta. Uh, Vlasov takes the stage at Tourmalet. No one really gives a shit. Hugh Karthy is the leader. What the? Cool. So Hugh Carthy leads 1 second on Van Riels, 4 seconds on Jack Cake, 32 on uh, Rodriguez. Matteo Jorgensen sits in P7, 154 down. That's I haven't done too badly. Hugh Carthy is in red. I, it's the one thing I did not see coming today. I really didn't. Vlasov wears Polka. I'm gonna guess it's it's not even Matteo Jorgensen wearing green. It's, it's skating fucking groves. Should have said a YouTube cycling mate. Really, you should have. Best young rider, it's Maxim Van Riel's best team, it's still not us. We're not even in the top uh, five, yeah, I'm not surprised we're in the top ten. We have got two riders on this race. Three stages in a top ten GC, that is currently what we have achieved on this Vuelta. Vuelta that will carry on in the next two episodes of this save. Uh, the Bing Bong Tour and the Tour of Britain will not make an appearance. I know, I know, you don't have to, to just be sad, and I'm, I'm aware. I know. Just move on, yeah. To grow up again. Um, but there will be the final two episodes of uh, of the Vuelta. Then we'll have one more episode with the Wells Lombardia, and uh, and then we'll be moving on to season four. So that's in about what two weeks now. So I'm I'm gonna hope there is some hype coming from your end, and I hope there is some hype towards the next two episodes of La Vuelta. To make sure to do so, then do subscribe to the channel. Do not be one of those seventy three percent of people who are not subscribed to the Guillaume YouTube channel and leave a like as well if you've enjoyed today's video. My name is Guillaume, have a wonderful day and goodbye. Pass me the phone.